So, as I'm recording this video, after early access, I think we've about eclipsed an entire month of MLB The Show 23. And I typically like to make a full video talking about my thoughts about the game for people who have not yet bought it, thinking about it, and also uh, just have a general con uh, discussion of how we're enjoying the game. And I will say, with a high degree of certainty, that one month in, I'm having much more fun than MLB The Show 22. And we're gonna talk about that here today. Uh, first off, let me know in the comments section what you guys have been enjoying and what you guys have not been enjoying let me see some highs and lows about mlb 23 to this point for you guys whether it be gameplay content in diamond dynasty uh the new franchise features or lack thereof in some people's opinions uh let's talk about that leave a like down below subscribe to the channel as always appreciate all the love on the gomer simpson side and let's get into this one so first and foremost i am diamond dynasty first and foremost i make content i stream i make videos uh that is my realm but i also love me some offline content we're gonna go kind of in order we'll start on diamond dynasty slash gameplay then segue into the offline modes and I'm pretty heavily invested into this obviously it is my line of work but I'm gonna kind of strip that away and look at a more casual aspect because I recognize most people aren't so hell-bent on as certain things as I would be so I'm gonna kind of roll back into when I just baseline enjoyed games for what they are before any dollar signs were attached to it so let's start with diamond dynasty they made some big moves this year uh, an unprecedented move as far as i can tell i've played other modes like madden ultimate team 2k's my team in the past and all of them follow this same formula of starting at a lower overall the top cards typically being like 90 ish and you progress through the year until you get to the 99 and then 2k at that point Point, the end game you get fucking 99 Shaq he's got Steph Curry three ball runs like deer and fox uh, it's a little insane right and MLB I guess was a little particular too because they had their collections they had 99s at launch but just a couple of them but now Diamond Dynasty blew the roof off and there was a handful of 99s that you could earn right off the rip I'm looking at my team right now I've got uh, one two three four five nine 99s and some supercharged cards that are 99s as well so i think content is in a good spot i thought they set it up well this year one thing that you would hear constantly whether it be twitter applies or anything else is people want to use their favorite players good cards of them when they still care about the game because mlb comes out at an interesting spot of course that's when baseball falls you know pretty much the hockey and basketball playoffs are right now but come june they're done june to september there's just baseball for north american sports football doesn't start until then and then in the fall that's when madden that's when 2k that's when nhl that's when fifa it's when call of duty that's when like all the big video games drop it's like the holiday fall season so mlb is at a great spot for the early part where lots of people play it so fans get frustrated when their best ken griffey jr card is like a 92 overall uh there's not their favorite guys like vladimir guerrero jr Junior didn't get a better card than his live series which was like an 84 overall last year until finest dropped and i think november so people want to use their favorite players when they still care about the game and that is what they've been doing we just got 99 griffey uh we've gotten 99 babe ruth into the game and i think at most, there's a lot of lineup diversification. There's a ton of great cards that the more ranked seasons and the more event games you play, you'll notice a lot of different cards being used, which I think is a great thing. You know, one, it prioritizes, use who you want. You know, use your favorite names. At the end of the day, we're all sports fans, right? We all love baseball and we want to use our guys. And then two, you know, there's lots of different attributes. You know, you can debate whether or not you want to go power heavy, contact heavy you want to be a cheeser go all speed so i think content's at a good spot i will say one thing it's a little disappointing is yes it was always fun to use the lower overall cards i remember i think uh my second day of playing i already had like a high diamond team because the world baseball classic program you play through that you get uh the full team of 97s 95s uh 90s 90 plus diamond team 
for playing one program that you can ple complete in like a day or two. It's obviously a lot different. Uh, so I've really been getting my fix in Battle Royale then using some of these Live Series cards. Uh, that has been enjoyable to me. So content is that way. There's set collections, there's seasons. Uh, I made a video talking about that earlier as well. Um, they're restricting what cards you can use, which in my opinion just narrows the window, making sure that you're not using the same cards all year. Because if they drop 99s from day one, I, again, I'm looking at Mike Trout right now, people wouldn't move on from him for the whole season. They don't want you to just give up, not grind anything, they want you to play the game, damn it. And I do think that they're gonna drop more 99 Mike Trouts, more 99 Trey Turners as well. So I'm not too worried about that. I think that's cool as well. Apart from that with content, they added the set one collections, which again, you just collect cards from set one, kind of like the Honus Wagner, the big legend and flashback collections in the past. Uh, the World Baseball Classic, I, I know we mentioned that kind of as an afterthought right there. It it's still crazy to say that we even got that in the game this year very very cool obviously i would have loved to see some sort of offline integration there but i get it uh they're on a strict contract with the wbc so their hands are kind of tied you know they didn't really have time to put in a whole tournament mode because their rights to list access of the licensing is gone on December 31st of this year. So completely makes sense that they don't want to waste that much developer time for it just to go away. Uh, on top of that, New Legends, we got Jeter, we got Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa. Very, very cool that they added some of the steroid guys, some of the big, big names we've been asking for for years on top of years. Co-op, they added a ranked mode to it so you can earn rewards by playing with your buddies. Uh, Co-op has always been fun. It was fun from the point that it dropped last year. There was just really no incentive to play besides having fun. But there's still a lot of issues. Uh, it's like a, I don't know, 25% chance that your game halts, that it freezes. Very annoying, very disappointing, especially now that there is rewards on the line, that you don't really get credit for these games. Uh, but co-op's still fun. Uh, overall, Diamond Dynasty made steps. It actually put in some innovation. They brought back Team Affinity once again. And all of that to say, this is probably the most no money spent friend the year yet you do not have to put any additional money on top of your 60 or 70 retail price to have a good time and have a competitive team which i think has to be commended looking at you 2k looking at you med looking at you fifa looking at you ea all right we'll talk about gameplay here gameplay feels a lot of the same but a little bit different uh we'll start with batting I think hitting is pretty much identical. They added a new bat PCI, which I know a lot of people do enjoy. Uh, there's a different way to play this year. The clutch attribute now has an effect on the game. We'd always make a joke whenever they would uh, like prioritize, oh, this guy's max clutch. I mean, it didn't really matter too much in gameplay, but now it does. When you have runners in scoring position, essentially your clutch rating replaces your contact and that decides how big your PCI, your plate coverage indicator is. It's clutch for the hitter versus pitch and clutch for, for the pitcher, opposed to uh, contact versus hit per nine like it usually would be with nobody on base. That's cool. Also for online, they made some changes too. The vision cone has been reduced by 50%, noting that you should be missing more bats as a pitcher and you're going to strike out more as a hitter. I will say, I don't really believe you. I, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Uh, there was a mission in the Battle Royale mode that you had to strike out 30 batters to earn progress in this program. We went 11 and two, and then we went 12 and one. So I played uh, 25 games. You wanna know how many guys I struck out? These are three inning games, mind you, but uh, I, I struck out nine batters. It is nearly impossible. Uh, there's still so many foul balls. I don't think that they really made a wide change to that. It feels a little bit better. Like if you're not close to the ball, you swing and miss a little bit more often, but not nearly what they hyped it up to be. Let's get the cat out of the bag here. Pitching. It is difficult. It is hard to pitch. Um, basically, a lot of the times you're par. You know, the shaded reticle, the shaded circle, the perfect accuracy region, noting where if you throw a perfect pitch on your 
pinpoint on your analog, on your meter, etc. It is going to go in the dot there somewhere. It's been extremely wonky and also glitchy at the times. There's occasions where you'll throw a perfect pitch and uh, it just goes through a fucking wormhole, teleports to the top of the strike zone, and it's a free ball. And that is where you get into issues. It's not pitches being left over the plate, at least for me. It's you try and pitch effectively, throw on the corners because you don't want to give your guys something easy to hit and they work 3-0 counts, 3-1 counts, you walk them and then you make a mistake. Then you don't quite get a perfect pitch. It's down the middle. They hit a grand slam. So that is what makes pitching so frustrating. And on top of that, the umpires, uh, they got a schedule in Lasix or, or something. These Mr. Magoo cosplayers need to get corrective lenses or something because there's so many pitches that fall right on the black, right on the strike zone. Oh, right, you didn't see it? It's ridiculous. Fielding, outfield ratings matter more. If you have poor fielding, you're gonna get a bad jump to the ball, which I think is great. Penalize people if they wanna use, uh, you know, the, the Giancarlo Stantons out there. If they wanna use the, the Juan Sotos, the Gold Glove finalist Juan Soto. Uh, also, the moving throw meter is cool as well. I will say, once you play the decent amount of the game, you really start to get it down. You'll still fuck up here and then, but not nearly as bad as when you first get uh, acclimated to it, but it's a cool little feature. It makes it a little bit more interesting that errors can happen here and there. Uh, so overall gameplay feels pretty similar, but I will say it feels better. Yes, pitching might be more frustrating, but it sure makes it a hell of a lot more fun to hit if you can be patient. Big if. Okay, let's move on to the offline content. We'll start with the Negro Leagues mode, the new storylines edition, which I think is absolutely fantastic. They clearly put a lot of love and dedication into this mode and it completely shows. They got the Negro League Museum president, Bob Kendrick, in to narrate the stories of eight different players from the NLB. Stories that a lot of us have probably never heard before. And I think that fantastic mode again because video games for me is a learning environment i look back to my earlier days when i started playing mlb the show the whole reason why i have an unhealthy uh, knowledge of baseball players from like 2009 to like 2012 i played the living hell out of franchise mode so like basically anybody i it's just really weird the kind of knowledge i have on it so I, I learned a lot about baseball, a lot about different players from video games, and they basically turned that up to 11, added an ESPN 30 for 30 documentary, and slice it with fun interactive gameplay as well. Like when you're using Satchel Page, and you go through the moment where they had the entire field brought into the pitcher's mound, because he just knew they couldn't hit him. They were talking shit, they couldn't back it up. Satchel struck out the side. Uh, just super, super cool finding out about those stories that again you probably would not have heard of otherwise and at least for me besides a couple like satchel page jackie robinson um really didn't know before so this is part of a multi-year process they're going to add in more players it's rumored josh gibson is going to come in maybe next year maybe the year after that but uh keynote here is it is a multi-year deal so look forward to plenty more i'm super excited to see what other players that are going to cover and i think it was a great choice to only do like eight players at a time so as to not lose really the rich history and uh, dampen the impact of these stories. It should be a focus and the proper time should be committed to it. So I think they did a great job. Okay, franchise mode. They did make some additions, which I will say I did not expect. Now, granted, they really only did one thing, which was the draft, but... If you want to look at it from a glass half full perspective, they really, really richened that aspect of the franchise mode. And if they can do that on another aspect next year, maybe expansion, maybe relocation. We just saw the Oakland A's or now the Las Vegas A's. That'd be a perfect segue into relocating teams in a substantial manner. That would be really, really cool. But the draft, we'll talk about that here, um, is as deep as you could really possibly get. It is ocean deep. Uh, I look at Madden, I look at 2K, this is 
is the best drafting mode out of all sports games currently. There's a lot of stories there. You find out a lot about different players. It's kind of the best of NCAA football's old uh, dynasty, you know, when you're recruiting and you know, putting that to baseball. It's super fun. You get to learn about many different players throughout the draft process, and you can mess up. It is not a guarantee just because someone looked good on paper. If you don't have the proper scouts, you can miss. Absolutely. There's a lot of realism in here, which I really, really do appreciate. If you look at baseball, that is the sport with the worst chance that your first round pick is going to actually turn into something. Obviously, you see bust in the NBA, the NFL all the time, but MLB, there's some drafts where for 30 teams, 30 different picks, there might only be like uh, two, three all-star players in, in that entire first round. So it's, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different strategy and you really have to pay attention to it if you wanna master it. If you don't wanna focus on it, sure, you can put it on auto, but if you're truly playing franchise mode for what it is, I think it is worth the while to actually invest yourself in the deep draft process. Again, besides that, they didn't really do fuck all. <laughs> They added in the new playoff format, which they didn't do last year, so that was just a catch-up. Um, I don't know. There's certainly other things that need to be added. Uh, the draft is great, but uh, I am optimistic for the next couple years, but we need more. You got to keep doing it, and you got to flesh out this boat. Because, again, talking about 2K, yes, the draft might be better, but 2K does everything better in their My NBA mode compared to this franchise mode. I could talk about March to October too much because they also did not do anything in March to October, except they did put in that same draft process in there as well. Uh, I will say MTO just generally is a pretty good mode. I know we kind of rip on it by association because seemingly franchise gets the cold shoulder. They're the middle child in favor to uh, the youngest, uh, the March to October mode, which has been getting all the love recently. Uh, I would say it's a good mode at this point. If you want a condensed story, if you don't want to play a whole franchise, if you want to live the biggest moments and not have to play through every single game, uh, March to October is a fun alternative for you. And finally, we'll talk about Road to the Show. I'm going to spend as about as much time as they did in the developer room for Road to the Show. Uh, it's bad. They didn't do anything to it. So yeah, that's my thoughts on MLB The Show 23 I do think some things are bound to change. I mean, you know, perspectives on content, that's an ongoing process. It's a, it's a live service game. I'm sure there's going to be stuff that uh, gets us hell bent. I'm sure that stuff that I'm going to love even more than what we've seen at this point so far. Uh, and gameplay as well, obviously it's a working process. We've gotten one gameplay patch to this point. I'm sure we're going to get more throughout the next months as we go. Uh, but right now, if I had to give this a number rating, and I do put everything into account, uh, but we'll do two separate. We'll go DD and gameplay, because I know a lot of people only care about that. I would give that a solid eight out of 10 right now. There's things that need work, gameplay, there's still some problems. Uh, there's some bugs, many seasons, for example, uh, just losing out on progress. You could play something, there's a bug that happens externally and you have to reset everything. You basically just lose hours and hours of work that you yourself have put in. Terrible cannot happen and I don't think that they've even really addressed it properly as well. They haven't really gave an explanation even an apology to people, which I think is, uh, it, it's damning. It is not good look on them at all. And the whole game as a whole, I'd probably give it a seven, I think. Road to the Show really depresses me. It's fine enough. I mean, it's there. You get to create your own character. You get to build them up. Uh, it just doesn't really feel. They always advertise it as the premier sports RPG when it's uh, about as shallow as a fucking kiddie pool. I mean, there's really not much 
um, other than surface level when it comes to Road of the Show, but it's fine enough for you to dick around and play some games. Uh, franchise, like I said, they made a step. It's obviously better than it was last year. The Negro League mode is great. Uh, yeah, I think a 7 out of 10, all things considered. Um, but if you wait a little bit heavier on offline, I could see you having a little bit less of a rating. Uh, it still needs work for sure. Uh, rough around the edges on some parts, but it has definitely been a better game. I think I gave 22 like a 5 out of 10. So uh, we're on the up and up. You uh, did a good job this year, SDS. I'm looking forward to uh, keep playing and having a good time. So let me know your rating in the comment section down below. Uh, thank you guys as always for watching these. Uh, always have a lot of fun and i appreciate all the support on the channels this year as well uh 23 has been a strong year looking forward to having it keep going so leave a like if you guys did enjoy subscribe to the channel thank you for watching i'll catch you guys on the next one